The mouth of the Nile River is approximately 100 miles away from Cairo. But do you know how long the Nile River is? Make your guess and keep that number in mind. The number you guessed probably isn't anywhere close to the correct answer. It's likely because I put the number 100 in your mind prior to you making your estimate, and your brain's anchored its guess on 100. Anchoring works because we're much more likely to tap into our relative thinking rather than absolute thinking. We need a reference. Anchoring the mind can create catalytic results. The brain uses heuristics, or shortcuts, to make decisions. And one shortcut is our brain's desire to anchor itself to a reference point. The way anchoring works is fairly simple. When we need to make an estimate, we look for and are influenced by a familiar position. It doesn't matter where this familiar position comes from, and often we're not even aware that we're basing our answer on it. But once an anchor is set, we're biased towards interpreting other information relative to the anchor. That's why your guess for the length of the Nile River is probably closer to the number 100 that I gave you rather than the actual length of 4,160 miles. The human brain is more comfortable when it's anchored instead of blowing about in the wind of uncertainty. A classic anchoring technique is subtly at play when a physician tells a patient about a success rate of a procedure. After all, a 90% success rate anchors the patient into thinking about success and in contrast, a 10% chance of adverse effects sounds really low, even though the risk of adverse effects is the same. Anchoring doesn't just happen with numbers. Another example of anchoring is when a physician is anchored to the initial symptoms of a patient. These initial symptoms may influence a doctor's subsequent evaluations, and if no other diagnostics or data are ordered, it'll most likely affect the diagnosis. That's why many physicians choose to order additional tests or consult their colleagues on serious diagnoses. So how can you leverage anchoring to communicate? Think of what you're trying to achieve with your communication and how you're trying to influence the behavior of your technical audience. Then create an anchor that is closer to what your intended goal is and communicate it to the audience before asking them to make the change. My team was once working with a group of technical professionals who were supposed to submit a report on a weekly basis, but only managed to submit their reports by the deadline 50 or 60% of the time. Not a great performance rate. But in analyzing the data, we found one week when 90% of the reports were submitted on time. So we devised an internal communications plan where we first shared that in analyzing the submission data, we'd found on-time submissions to be as high as 90%. We then said that we understand that things come up from time to time, affecting someone's ability to submit their report on time, before asking everyone to tell us a reasonable expectation of what the individual submission rate should be. By anchoring the audience on their highest performance, instigating them to write down their own submission frequency, in effect, committing to the new behavior based on the anchor, and publishing the weekly submission rates shortly after the deadline, the team was able to maintain a submission rate of approximately 95% on an ongoing basis. Humans are beautifully complex, and our actions are governed by certain patterns. Understand these patterns, and you can inspire people to action and create catalytic results.